these are characters that I did in the underground comics. This is Nard and Pat. You can come into this room. when we did BG1 around that time. Why do Lynch and Williamson keep inking comic books when they have made a total of $22 since they incorporated? Because they know they're in the vanguards of a new lifestyle. That's why. <laughs> they got that about Thoreau and stuff. Well, Dollar, it would seem, wrote a letter every day. So most of these are from Don Dollar. When I started Wild, which was kind of aping Mad Magazine, they had Alfred E. Newman, and I thought, well, I need a character. So I thought, well, I can use that as my mascot for Wild. Wild was a fanzine. It was printed in purple ink on Ditto Masters. And a couple of the artists that worked with me when they were teenagers on that were Jay Lynch and Skip Williamson and Art Spiegelman, who later went on to become big in the underground comics world. A lot of us were cartoonists, but we never would have thought to publish our magazine until we saw Wild. We needed to publish, and there was nobody, no place to publish because we were just kids. So we made up our own stuff. For a 16-year-old kid, he was really obsessed with this. I would get like a letter from Dollar every uh, day or two. At one point, toward the end, after around the time Wild 10 came out, he wanted to do a comic book, and his first idea was to get the New Republic to publish it. <laughs> Pro Junior gets kicked out of the New Republic, I guess. We got involved with this because we didn't know there was such a thing as fanzines in, in Cracked Magazine. When Paul Lakin was the editor, he printed a, he put a plug in there for Joe Pilati's fanzine, and we all sent for that. And in the back of Smudge, Pilati's fanzines, there were reviews of other fanzines. One was Wild, and we sent for that, and we wound up drawing for that. Now here's a letter from Art here. Many thanks for your show of interest in the court jester. This is before I knew Art. The court jester became uh, blasé. I met Art in... Miami and real early on. Art was 14 and I was like 16, I guess. What memories do you have of that? Just, Art, what, Art called me on the phone and said, I don't know if you want to talk to me, I'm only 14. <laughs> so now, at this point, Dollar ceases to be as prolific a letter writer, and these letters are from Art. This is the dummy for Wild number 13. The Dollar did. An interview with Don Oreck. This never came out. Here's Dollar drawing Skip. Oh wait, he was trying to get me to edit it. Jay, I think maybe I owe you a letter. Not sure, though. Spiegelman doesn't want Wild because he thinks he'd screw it up. 
Uh, so do you want wild? I think you'd keep up the quality better than Spieg could have. If you want it, it's yours. I hope you do. I can't find anyone who to take it, and if you don't take it, Wild will probably fold. I'm getting a job with Maryland's largest advertising agency. I'll ditch the other job. Well, got a cut. And this is more about trying to get me to take Wild. So by, by this point, I was living in Chicago, and you know, similar to the way I'm living now. So. Didn't want to do wild. I was um, 15. 15, yeah, 15 when I started publishing Wild, and it was uh, dittoed. I went out and bought a little second-hand ditto machine. I think it was 40 bucks, but it was hand crank, wasn't automatic. <laughs> and that's how I that's how I did it, you know. And I got um, Famous Monsters used to have a section in the back called Graveyard Examiner or something, and fans could send little notices in, and Forrest Ackerman would publish them. So I put, I had a notice published in Famous Monsters, and ironically, I think it was the same issue. Another guy had one, a little notice a few down from mine that there was a fanzine called Smudge about comics. So I got in touch with him, he got in touch with me, we became good friends. And that's where I think Jay Lynch found out about Wild, and then Skip Williamson, and I don't know, I, Spiegelman, I guess. Um, so I just kind of mushroomed from that. But if it wouldn't been for that little plug in Famous Monsters, I mean, Wild probably would have been handed out to my family and friends in the neighborhood, and that would have been the end of it. But it turned out, I actually got people that sent money for it, because I think we were charging... 10 cents, nickel a copy, or 20 or 30 cents for the four issue subscription, and people would paste their nickels and dimes to a piece of cardboard, stick it in an envelope, and mail it in. And so suddenly I actually was sending out copies all over the country. Not many, but you know, 20, 30, 40, I can't even remember how many.